Okay, we'll start. I'm going to bring the you around later. <laughs> Maybe miss out. Um, Mark Sam from Winterhall, and over the past couple of years we've been developing Joomla sites, newly and largely from .NET installations, um, obviously Microsoft products. And a lot of clients have said to us, what makes you qualify to use Joomla? So there isn't anything other than our portfolio and the fact that we can talk to people. Because they're used to dealing with people who've got qualifications, they're, 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 they feel comfortable when they see them through MCSE or whatever, whatever qualifications they have got. And it got me thinking, it would be a good idea to have qualifications in June. I spoke to a few people here today who said that the idea has been rooted around for a few years. Um, but let's see if we can get some traction. So this is just really a brain dump to see if we can start a conversation here. If it's a good idea, great. If it's not a good idea, we'll see. Um, I've used the term developers here to mean us on the supply side of June, whether it's templates, extensions, coders, consultants or whatever, and end users to, to mean clients, people who pay for June sites or extensions. <coughs> so, so why do we need certification? To help developers independently prove their expertise so they can say, I've got X number of years experience, I've passed these particular exams. So that makes me a particularly talented template designer, extensions developer, like coder, whatever. It would help Joomla become a more serious business content management system, help compete against some of the bigger content management systems, some of the more professional ones, with this sort of with this um, professional qualifications. At least we can compare ourselves against .NET developers and uh, Alfresco and sort of the Linux professionals. We'll also like developers to charge according to their skills, which I'm sure helps to a certain degree anyway, but it will allow people to justify their charges and say, look, you know, I'm a whatever, level 3, level 10, whatever. It also, most importantly, helps Joomla protect its brand. At the moment, anyone can download Joomla and install it. And there's no real difference between someone who's downloaded Joomla today or one clicked installed it and someone who's been doing it for 10 years. As far as the client concerned, it's, it's, a, it's a website. A badly designed website would reflect badly on Joomla. If we had some kind of certification, it would allow Joomla to say, these people know what they're doing. These people are protecting our brand because they're doing it properly. They know how to do it. This person has just installed it. It's full of holes, it's got security holes. Um, and obviously bring income to the project. So who's going to benefit? End users, which is the people we work for, our clients and customers. They'll know that the people who are working on the site know what they're talking about, they know what they're doing. Developers, which is everyone in this conference, who can actually distinguish themselves from other firms, they can say, you know, Bob Smith down the road, has got loads of really, really dreadful junior sites because they're all just control panel, one click installs. But someone else has got qualifications to say, look, you know, I've, I've spent three years working my way up, I've got excellent certifications from Joomla, I know what I'm talking about. And of course, the Joomla project, extra income from certification fees, prestige of having professionally qualified developers working um, and it also protects the brand as I mentioned. You can then separate out those people who know what they're talking about and are willing to actually protect the Joomla brand and go out there and do a good job and be ambassadors for Joomla against those people who don't care. Uh, just as an interesting, I'm sure you all know Drew Palace got some VC funding, um, seven million dollars. I believe they've even got Steve told me earlier they've got some, some more funding recently. So, what are we going to do with it? We don't know. So, how does it work? I think it has to work in two ways. One, there has to be some kind of formal examination. Um, obviously, you've got to be able to test your skills. But I think it also means it can't work without community involvement, which means everybody outside of open source matters, you know, us, the community, people on the forums. We've got to buy into it, we've got to say, this is a good idea, we, just, we support it, and we will, we will A, we will join up, we will certify ourselves. Um, different areas, we all work in different areas, but there are some people who work a little bit in everything, some people are probably experts in all of these areas, development, design, hosting, training, support, I don't see any reason why not someone could become a subject matter expert in one particular area, whereas other people could just be um, a jack of all trade, very good in lots of things. 
uh, from women. <coughs> so, but why different areas? It's going to allow those who work at one part of Joomla, some of the as an extension developer, isn't directly comparable to someone who makes templates. Uh, there's no, it's still coding, but how, how do you compare the two? If you've got some kind of certification program, you can say this person is, has reached a certain level, so is this person. They're both good at their job. They've both reached a certain level at their job in totally different areas. It might also be that someone will rise to the top. They might be a fantastic coder, extension developer. Um, they would be brilliant at hosting. They understand support. They help contribute to the, the core code. They're an all-round good person. And Obviously, their, their standing, their certification would be much higher than others, and it allow people to allow them to stand out. <coughs> um, there's also going to be an incentive to cross specialise. If you've, for instance, uh, an extensions developer, you say, "Well, I'm, I've got as good as I could with extensions. I'm going to, I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to understand Joomla hosting. I'm going to be a Joomla hosting expert, or I'm going to start working with templates." But this more competition amongst more amongst developers means more end users. More end users means more work for developers, and more money for Joomla, with more certification, and ultimately uh, greater market penetration. The more ubiquity that Joomla has, the better it will become. And it means that someone coming into the marketplace who wants to be a developer will pick Joomla because there is a there's a progression of certification path which is then supported by the whole community. Users, end users, will look at this and think, I'm going to go with Joomla because it's professionally supported. As I said, it needs to be backed by open source matters and the wider community. It's all very well for um, the, the, the core development team to say, yeah, we think this is a great idea, but no one else in the community will. So it's, it's got to be, it's got to be everything everyone, someone believes in. It's got, it's got to be got to come from the community as well. It's also going to be available at different skill levels. <coughs> there are people in this conference who are beginners. I've, I've met a couple of guys here who are just they're literally building templates. Um, there's a couple of guys who built an extension. Very, very basic stuff. And there are some people who are quite literally experts. So it's got to be something that will, um, that will appeal to someone starting out and also someone who's got six, seven years experience in coding. It's also got to be updated. Joomla is going to be changing all the time. So, uh, a bit like some of the other Linux qualifications which come out in a year or two years, it's got to be something that is relevant. It also gives a certification path. You start out at the bottom, you start out wherever you're comfortable, and you can see a progression. You can say, you know, three years' time, I'm going to be the best at doing this particular task, or I'm going to be the best at a number of different tasks. I'll, I'll show you how I, I think that could work later. But it's going to be easy enough to attract semi-skilled users the people who work in Juma for a living. And also, of course, the, uh, the professionals. So, how could it work? As I said, it's going to be an exam. Obviously, we can, I think, uh, building an online examination system will be quite easy for, for us. Um, Community participation, it's all very well everyone, if you pass an exam, that means you're pretty good at passing an exam, you probably know your stuff. But what about helping out in the forum? Someone who's good at passing exams and helps out in the forum is better than someone who just passes exams. And the forums are particularly, uh, I think everyone needs to get involved in the forums. It helps new people coming in and also it helps you by the end by just bolstering your own experience, finding answers. And maybe peer committee it could be Final level, your final level of people who will say, you know, you've reached the highest level in this particular area of certification. When you come, when you talk to us on the phone or do a, a, a Skype video interview, and we'll see just how much you know. We'll ask you some background questions so that you can get right to the very end. Um, you should obviously be able to take more than one exam. And I think a system which will allow you to have an aggregate score so that you can you can aggregate your scores across a number of different levels, which would give you, let's say, uh, a much higher skill than someone who's just completed one particular exam. Um, and obviously there needs to be a central repository of, uh, of profiles, exam results, um, that's sort of thing maintained by the open source sort of matters.
Is anyone else doing it? Uh, well, yes and no. Um, you've probably heard of Google. They sort of do open source, but they sort of don't. But they're probably the closest thing to think of for the moment. Um, they've got quite a good certification program, which is more or less the same sort of area you can choose to certify in particular areas. You can get points which will build up your overall score, so you can be a Google expert. Uh, Red Hat obviously do quite a lot of um, uh, certification programs. Alfresco is another commercial and open source company, and they've got certification programs. MySQL, AppSend, uh, engineer programs, and so is uh, Ubuntu. But there's no, there's, uh, no direct comparison. Drupal, which I've uh, seen in more degree, would be the direct competitor to uh, Joomla. They've got, um, looks like they're going to do something with it. They've got a Drupal Association. And that looks like the basis of maybe some kind of certification program that they would want to put in at some point. So, we should see. Is there any money in it? That was a good question. Yeah. Um, Red Hat charge, well, Red Hat got around 40,000 certified engineers, and they charge from around 350 to $3,000 for a degree, uh, not a degree, a certification. Um, they usually update it maybe once a year, every two years, certainly. Usually when a new distribution comes out. Alfresco, I found, charged them around $1,300. If you want to spend five days in Johannesburg later this year, it's $14,000 for five days. I'm not suggesting you the charge that. Um, Zen put around 5,000 engineers, um, and they, they charge around 125, and that's per, um, per distribution. So if, you, if a, new, a new version of the software comes out, they want you to be qualified in that. So if they do a new distribution every year, they call that referral fee each year. Uh, obviously, recurring annual payments in charge on an annual basis. That's it. Any questions? Simple and straightforward. Uh, I remember a few years ago there was some sort of uh, Sorry? A few years ago there was some sort of activity management. Or excited, very good. Then they have to put like a logo so to know if it could be a business partner or a, some sort of development partner or do you not. Know, it looked like there was some path with our certificates or. Uh, there, are actually three, there are three logos. There are actually three logos that you can yeah. download and use, right. which are on my business card. Um, but there's no, there's no requirement to use them. I mean, yeah. anyone can download them and use them. Um, you know, it's hosting provider, business provider, and then solutions provider. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's not tied to anything. Uh, there's, no, there's no requirement to be qualified in anything mm -hmm. uh, to do it. Actually, so, yeah, maybe, maybe that can be part of it. Yeah, it's, I, I, I like the idea that we, uh, we have just three categories. Of, it's like a hosting or development partner or business partner. Yeah. Because let's say if you are doing templates, you are not just a designer, or a similar, more development designer. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I would say uh, development, business, and hosting these three categories is maximum that I can see. Well, maybe these could be the beginnings of the categories that, that mm -hmm. provide certification. If you specialize in a particular area or a particular application of Joomla, um, if you do purely coding, maybe that could be your, your path. And you can eventually work to become a solutions provider, a qualified solution, solution provider. Um, the same with hosting and um, security. Because I, I see a niche for content, not for an individual. Individual, really, uh, okay, there are a lot of companies that are just one man show, but uh, I think the future would be to you know, build more uh, bigger companies uh, using Kajuma and to bring Juma to some bigger corporates, which would be really nice in the long term. Yeah. So, um, to have some certificates for the companies, not for individuals. So it would be really yeah. beneficial. Well, I think it would be a good idea to have certification for individuals and maybe companies um, could be company qualified. Would, for instance, Google have an AdWords program. You can become an AdWords certified professional. The sort of the company can become uh, a certified company if you've got a certain number of AdWords professionals at a certain level. So maybe that would be a good incentive for people to start training within it so that their company gets another level, another level of certification. Again, obviously, charge more fees appropriately. <coughs> I have very mixed feelings on all this. Um, 
Like, I, I see certification as kind of a, it, it's something that if you put a lot of effort into putting a program together, it, it can work out really well. And, if, um, and otherwise, it can be just kind of a worthless piece of paper. Um, so like uh, doing a comparison, say uh, Microsoft certain MSCs, um, you know those, those aren't, uh, from what I've heard, are not very highly regarded. But then on the other hand, you have like your Cisco certified engineers that uh, where that is a very valuable certification, and but it's a much 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 more expensive certification to obtain and to uh, and to oversee. And I, I kind of see the um, certification of individuals as something that could potentially be very expensive to do for a community. Do you mean expensive for the individual or for the individual? For both. For it, for it, it, would, it would take a lot of effort to put together some uh, the, the right kind of tests and, um, uh, and, and the right kind of uh, oversight to make sure that that happens. I mean, we would definitely have to have somebody, we would have to have paid staff I would think to. Oh, um, I, I'm a professional trainer on open source matters, so it, it would probably come through me at some point. Yeah. And I can see only one possible way that it would be done, and that would be to outs outsource it to a professional publisher or exam development. We can't really do the paid staff. Um, you said well, there's only five of us basically on OSM who. I, I do have a yeah. that, that comes back to the back and butter point that is it worth it? If we were talking about fifty thousand dollars a year or hundred thousand dollars a year, it isn't it isn't worth it. It's that it's worthless. Mm -hmm. There are, as of Friday morning, three hundred and eighty four thousand four hundred and fifty six thousand men uh, registered users on the June forums. I reckon maybe half of those are people who just registered once, asked a question, disappeared. <coughs> but let's assume that ten percent of those signed up for the certification at hundred dollars a year. That's yeah. three point eight million dollars. Uh, another idea that comes to mind uh, that might make this easier at least to get started or to uh, to ramp up would be to do uh, certifications of extensions. And uh, I think that would be, and it wouldn't necessarily be like a, uh, like for instance, we're, we're finally getting to the point where we're getting coding standards for Joomla written down, uh, where you can test against it and there's going to be a lint check, um, Arlen Walker, uh, on the mailing list was uh, was working on uh, some coding standards for Joomla, and um, I mean just going over some basic stuff like that for components that people release uh, could help in that way, and say okay, uh, you know if it's a commercial extension you would have to pay to have the certification run, but uh, when you would complete the certification of your extension or your template or whatever it is. Uh, then you might be able to get a seal for that extension, saying, you know, I, this is a certified extension, you can go back and view that certification. And then even though you're not specifically certifying the skills of the person, you still have the extension that you can see, and you can see what they, what they did, and that somebody from the Joomla community, or uh, from OSM, actually reviewed that and said, yes, this is according to the, the standards of our project. Yeah. Can you scroll back to where you had the list of areas that may have certification. Yeah. yeah, so Joe, you talked about development or these yeah. extensions, right? Mm -hmm. And the we're working on hosting. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's so many bad hosting companies out there mm -hmm. that OSM is actually working on approving hosting companies. They don't have they check for going to check for a lot of basic security problems like having one rewrite on a safe mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, having Apache problems and so on. But a lot of that, that could be the basis of a certification for hosting companies. It is to some extent. Yeah. yeah. And you know, if, if you say, um, if you say, okay, fine, you, you pass a certification to use the certified hosting provider, then it's $250 a year or $1,000 a year. Right. Cost. Yeah. Um, sorry, Chris. Yeah. No, I'm just asking if you actually spoken to our assignment about uh, these ideas yet? No. Just now I've got a post. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just now. Apart from the two members are already here. No. Uh, well, I'm not actually on OSM. I'm on the board of OSM. Um, it is something that's been brought up many times over the past couple of years, uh, to my knowledge, I think. Um, I'm not on the current board of, of OSM.
so I don't know what the current situation is regarding this, but it, is, it has been investigated. Um, and uh, I, I, for one, think it's a, it's a really positive thing. I think I'd like to see it move forward. Um, but I also agree with, with, with Steve and Joe that it has to be done professionally. It has to be, really, we're talking about outsourcing it to a professional yeah. organization that knows how to do these things. Yeah. Because it is hugely labor intensive. It's very difficult to produce uh, the training materials um, and, the, and the whole infrastructure of handling it all uh, in a professional way that would actually give credibility to that certification at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, there are, there are other people interested in this. I know people within, within OSM are interested in it. I know particularly Elin um, uh, is it, very interested in this. So please make contact with them and I'll talk to them. I think the first step has got to be that, that we, the community, say, yes, this is something we want to do. We would actually buy a certification. We would actually go down that path. And if we get OSM to say, yeah, we do, we would actually provide that. Then, then the next step after that is to find some outsourcer who will actually put together the packages and that will allow us to, to actually provide that. Maybe in the future it could be done in-house. But yeah, you're right, maybe, maybe to begin with, who knows what the demand would be. Um, you know, if it goes worldwide, it's, it might just it might swamp the office. Sorry. Yeah, I have a question. Yesterday here over the beer, I got a business card from, from uh, another visitor here and it says Joomla Expert on his business card. And I'm sure he is. Quite a he claims that he is. Fine with me. Um, I don't doubt that. That's not the issue. The issue is, you know, certifying a hosting company and charging them a thousand euro a year or a dollars a year or whatever. That is, that is one thing. What is, in, what is in for all these freelancers, for all these one one person companies for all these the yeah. I'm not sure if they, they maybe they can hardly make a living of Juna and, and now you want to charge them for, for, for the right to do so or whatever. Maybe that's a, a brand related issue you say you cannot you cannot offer an extension on the extension directory if you are not qualified or whatever what you know that would what do we tell these guys? Yeah. That would be a common complaint that if the certification is Joe said the, the expensive one you mentioned was like this guy, yeah. um, so if it's five thousand dollars for the certification, that's almost forcing a freelancer to pay it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's difficult for them to get work. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not certified. I I can afford five thousand dollars. Yeah, I, from what I've understood, most people that get Cisco certifications so they are almost always sponsored through their employer. It's like it's it's prohibitively expensive to just go and get it yourself. So it's not the certification itself is not yeah. The certification itself for Cisco is not so expensive, but it is a cost, a five a five day cost. It builds I think uh, five hundred or thousand euros a day. Right. But the cost itself, uh, the exam itself is not so ex extensive. If you buy a book and you st you you uh, study study at home, then you can do it uh, in yourself. Oh, okay. But that, that's the question of supply and demand. If it costs 5,000 a year or 5,000 to get Cisco, Cisco qualifications, there won't be many people out there who will have that who can afford to do that. Right. So therefore, the value of that person and their experience is much more than someone who's just bought a book on Cisco who's reading it. Yeah. So it's, it becomes self-perpetuating. When you have qualifications, companies will, companies will say, we only want certified professionals. Well, this is the value of those certifications. Sorry, but this is a I think if you if you would have a, a situation like that, and in fact I think if you have any more than one level of qualification, the effect will be that those who can afford it will get it. Um, uh, and, on, and even with more levels, you know, but not everyone will be able to afford the, the, the time, effort and money to go to the highest level. Um, and that means that all those thousands of one-man shop developers that you have for Duma, they're essentially losing a lot of business. You know, in, in one thing's right. I don't think that is good, because that is, I think, one of the, the ways in which the, the uh, project feeds itself with new faces, with, with, with new people, with new contributions, with the people who, after time, do become experts. But that's not how I start. If you, if you remove the possibility for people to basically start as as, uh, as, as, as the ones who, who make those extensions that are not very good. Then uh, you're removing the learning process, in the free learning process that is so necessary for the 
the collaborative community to feed itself. Um, and therefore, I think we should never think about more than one level, and that should be an affordable level. My point of view is, is different yet, and, and, and that's why I thought it was interesting to come here, because I, I've, I've always been interested in, in um, looking at, for example, the, uh, the, the trademark side of, of, of things in human, and that has, that has one complication. That complication is simply this, that trademark law is designed for one source of a product or service to be an exclusive user. Um, now, that doesn't need to be, and you know, we can see that every time that we go to McDonald's, because that's a franchise order, uh, but you actually visit McDonald's where a franchisee, they do not own the trademark. However, they are, they are subjected to very stringent conditions um, on which the, the use of the trademark depends. In that sort of framework, Juma uh, can also very, be very liberal, a liberal as, as it is actually, uh, with, with allowing people to use the Juma trademark, um, as you have it on your card. Yeah. Right? You, you have that no doubt in accordance with the policy, but um, that is a very liberal policy. I, I, I personally think too liberal in one way, and not liberal, but liberal enough actually in another way. I see certification as a perfect tool to actually put an end to, to that issue and to say um, since we do have some requirements uh, and that we can simply refer to the certification, um, then it is actually quite responsible to allow people to use trademark and still have very solid trademark protection. Um, and again, to my mind, that points to having one affordable level of certification. And what you're doing there, really, I think, is to, uh, is to avoid the really bad examples of, of how it's going to go wrong. But you've cleaned those up, but you've prevented those to be associated with the project. Um, I'm not sure if you should go further in the way that Microsoft does, for example. Um, to start pointing out who the, who the real experts are and who the biggest companies are and the biggest companies have the most people with the most certificates and, and so on. I'm not sure if that should be the end. But the problem is we, if you have one level certification, we'll take if I don't mind using you as an example. Sure. Um, you know, I, I can hack PHP code, I'm not brilliant, I'm, I'm, I'm no, by no means a coder. But if you had a certification that allowed me to easily qualify or with a bit of work to qualify, it'd be far too easy for you. On yeah. the other hand, if you had something that you could do, there's no way I could do it. So, we're, we're about to what that one certification be. Ideally, it needs to be sufficiently low so that it requires some skill, some experience, and some, in, some um, effort to get it, but not so that it's impossible. But then there also needs to be, you know, if Joe probably wouldn't do, he could probably do the level one in his sleep, and then level two, and then he might sort of go to level five if there was such a thing. Yeah, well, I, I, I would hope that, that's, that's uh, that you, for example, would work work into this with, uh, with some people who are really, well, in the general, really the best owners around, like you do And you would, uh, and you would together sit down and see, so what, what level would you like to have? Uh, how many people have that? And, and how easy it is uh, to actually educate them to a slightly higher level? And then you sort of find a compromise I, I, I wouldn't be able to say what that compromise would be. Um, yeah. But I'm sure it will have to be a compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is just why I kind of come back still to, you know, certifying the extensions rather than the, the developers. Because I think it's, uh, you know, we can come up with all these different metrics and, and qualifications and and things to, to quantify and qualify and you know, <coughs> things that are, are qualitative measures. But um, it, with an extension, it's like, okay, he's, you know, whoever has coded this has met the standard for coding, and the extension is what it is. And it's pretty easy to determine, you know, um, whether or not you want to work with this person based on what kind of components they produce, or templates, or whatever. Yeah. There's also some basis as well for, for, for this in the showcase. Um, you know, if, you, if you want to put your site in the showcase, then you've got to have X number of uh, sorry, the feature that you have X number of large size that could be dual ones that got to be um, vetted by someone. So there's, there's, sort of, there's a sort of framework there for some kind of path. So maybe